40 years ago, Jimmy Carter, the president of the United States, broke the peace agreement between Israel and Egypt. Leon Charlie played a major role in the peace talk between Israel and Egypt. It is our moral obligation to carry his Leon legacy forward and to complete what they started in Camp David. I wish you good luck. And ladies and gentlemen, let's negotiate. I mean, like my main point here is recognition because if you put a border, you're accepting that there's a nation here and there's a nation here. We understand there needs to be recognition, but how do you suggest we do that? The checkpoints and stuff, they are not a solution because they increase more their anger and they lead to do what they are doing. I think you can start off from uh, Palestinians having their own IDs. I agree that both nations should have their own identity and passport, but as there are some Palestinians that do not believe in the existence of Israel, there are some Israelis that do not believe in the existence of Palestine. The negotiations are very complex processes. Here, of course, you've got a mixture of Israeli and Palestinian, as well as international. I think that gives, the sort of, particularly the international students, a real sense of how bitter this conflict is and how profound the conflict is and how much is at stake. The key is to give them just basic rights in order to make them have trust. It's in the hands of Israel. Who can actually like say what they need, what they don't need? Some people get water like a few hours a day. So maybe some we could uh, get some kind of inspection of like the situation in Palestine and make a report of what Palestine actually needs. Not wants, needs. They are much more creative than we are. Not necessarily realistic, but uh, they are creative. If somebody would come for mouse and see the situation, what would they think about? What is the issue here, really? I see it as an abuse of power. A miscommunication between the both sides. Palestinians want the whole land, and Israelis want the whole land. Like, they cannot accept that we have to share this land. They are raising, you know, the need for fairness, a sense of justice. As professional or intellectuals that deal with this issue, we tend to uh, ignore these emotions. Do you think that the new generation can bring peace among the Israelis and Palestinians? Well, yes. I mean, that's always been the case in every conflict that's eventually been resolved. It's always been a new generation has come along with new ideas and new thinking. Will these ideas be picked up by governments? Well, probably not. But I think that in years to come, some of the people around these tables will go into government or will go into very influential positions. So I think these ideas have a way of making their way into the official table in time. So I think that's the kind of investment we're making here. Here's the old city. Generally, it's divided to four quarters. The Muslim quarter up here, the Christian quarter, the Armenian quarter, and the Jewish quarter. When we talk about this issue, we talk about questions of sovereignty. If you start talking about who owns what, it's over, because nobody will give away sovereignty over their most important religious sites. I think it's very important that the religious part of the city is completely separate from the political aspect of dealing with Jerusalem, meaning that no one has sovereignty. And it's very important to have a third party to, let's say, overview and work as a mediator between the two parties. The interaction with the students was very telling because despite their gap of perhaps some information and knowledge, their instincts are spot on. And what about the Armenian part or the Christian part? And they all see that they also have important places over there. Having a third party would actually make all of these nationalities, all of these cultures that have been overlooked for so many years be equal representation as the Islamic and the Jewish part. The international's involvement is actually better for our point of view because they have no biased opinions on it. They just have the knowledge with no experience on the conflict. I think the international students tend to approach this a little bit more rationally. They don't bring the group emotion, you know, being part of the tribe, into the equation as much as the Israeli and Palestinian students. What kind of services you don't want to provide? When you build the defense, we'll not provide you water for you, we'll not provide uh, yeah, you electricity. Electricity. But what if you do say solutions, 
One of the things is sharing resources. One of the things. And having access both... Sharing resources doesn't mean that one side will be providing everything for you. I've never heard any of the Israelis' perspectives. I've been living in the West Bank with Palestinians only for 15 years. So it's kind of so weird and so, so interesting. It's really a very beautiful experience because most of the Palestinians don't talk to their side and Israelis don't talk to Palestinians. But that's why we didn't solve the problem yet because we don't talk to each other. What we're trying to do here is create trust so that we can create peace. If you give us many more problems to solve because of this, then there is no trust, there is no peace. Okay, I agree. Just imagine, he is an ex-prisoner and he's sitting here with an ex-general from the Israeli military and we are talking to each other. People ask me, you are against the occupation, how come you're talking to Israelis? In my mind, even those in the PLO who were shooting were talking to Israelis. The wrong way of the talk, but they were talking to them. I chose the other lane, which is talking to the Israelis to open up. We want to make sure that we continue to talk to each other. We continue to exchange ideas with each other. And we continue to build up friendship. We don't have the luxury to give up hope. Otherwise, there is no reason for us to be here. What we need really is faith in the possibility of making some kind of an agreement and the creativity that you young people have. The student negotiated and negotiated and towards the evening they succeeded to conclude agreement on trust building measures. First trust building measure is that prisoners will get fair trail and Israelis will hold a hostage back. Palestine agreed to stop building tunnels, reduce freedom fighter attacks, the Israeli delegation accepted to put less checkpoints, release some prisoners, and recognize Palestine as a state. Jerusalem will belong to neither side. It will not be Israel, so it will not be Palestine. Jerusalem will be an international city. Now they are negotiating what is the optimal solution to the conflict, how to end this conflict. Is it two states or one state? Let's see what happens. We are all excited and we are looking to see the agreement. We are, we, are we are giving you an offer. This is your offer. offer. You want to get like the entire north. No, and it will no, not be given to you. We will be giving you like that, and here you can get this. You're giving Do you know what's that? Do you know what's that? Is, is that a place that we can live in? Yeah. yeah. No, You're take okay. it. We don't want it. We don't okay, want so it. we're taking it. Take it. Oh. But we're <laughs> taking the north. Wait, wait, you wait, take wait, the south, we take the north. No, you are not taking Can you not take the south and the north? You say it, but the It was so hard to divide the land. And we had even some problems and like the debate become like harder when we start talking about the land and Jerusalem. Cause like it means to us a lot and it means to the other side a lot. Yeah. To find a way with making one mass of land with the sea. Palestine agreed that there's going to be a, a border around Jerusalem with checkpoints on both sides. Who are the forces in the checkpoints in Jerusalem? It's going to be a mix of both of Israelis, Palestinian and supervised by internationals. Okay. That sounds fair. That sounds fair? Yeah, that's yeah. Okay. So there will be a Beyond any expectations, the three negotiating tables succeeded to reach two agreements, trust building measure and conclusive peace pact. The delegation of Israel, together with the delegation of Palestine, decides to establish educational courses to both Palestinians and Israelis, promoting the idea of dialogue and the importance of peace. Being open to meaningful and fruitful discussion guided by the principle of mutual understanding and respectful dialogue. Is obligation of Israel to provide economical aid, as well basic resources as a trial period to Palestine use from those sources to create sovereignty and freedom as a state. There will be a border around the area of Jerusalem and the checkpoints will be supervised by both Palestinians and Israelis with the supervision of internationals to make sure of equal treatment for both sides. The Israeli army would leave the Palestinian territory. Israel will continue having an army. Palestine will have police forces in the first two years and then if they have uh, enough resources, they may form an army.
when you see the agreements of high school students, you are amazed. The way they phrase it, the way they reach solution to main problem, it's unbelievable. We're always in a situation where the ideas we're developing and we're working on can be picked up and implemented when the political situation changes. So the important thing is not to give up. Well, I think what we can take out of the simulations is to understand each other, to understand how the conflict works at its core. And if you have these experiences, it makes it easier to work in the future on these issues. We're the new generation. New generation makes the future. New generation makes the peace. Why? Because new generation forgets whatever happened in the past between those people that destroyed their peace. You are terrific. Every year I'm amazed how wonderful, smart and gutsy you are. And it warms my heart to see you struggle. Uh, it's a big challenge and you're really doing it very, very, very well in a very mature way. You're in an age that you can participate soon as voters and uh, you can make a difference by choosing the right people, by choosing the right ideas, supporting the right people and right ideas. So this is only a beginning for you, and I hope you'll keep the flame going and going and never break. We don't stop many times to recognize the wonderful things that there are in our lives. And one of them is people that are still fighting for peace. And let that be Tzili and the staff of the Sharni Center and Sapir that is dedicating his uh, life to it, and also you. Thanks to Leon and Tzili, the word has a better idea of what happened behind the scenes. Leon's vision for peace and justice and for equal rights lives on in the Leon Charney Resolution Center. Leon's legacy will be realized in its fullest when Palestinians, Arabs, and Israelis can finally live in harmony.